Today we're gonna we're going to do a dried flower candle demo. So we've done a class in October, I believe, and we didn't do anything special with the candles. Um, we just did a simple how to do it. It's going going to be the same process, but at the end we we'll just add some dried can uh, dried flowers on top. I also have some shells or. Um, some other items that we can go ahead and make the candles a little bit more fancier. Uh, you can go ahead and change to the next slide. So our supply list, I did it to make 12 four ounce candles. And that is this size. Can you see it okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so thank you. In order to you can go back to the PowerPoint. Thanks. Okay. Um, so in order to do this, you need 12 of everything that goes in the candle. Um, we have a jar I usually buy in bulk. Um, we have our hemp wicks that they come in a bag just like this. And usually they will have a little bottom at the end to attach to the candle. Sometimes they don't. I like to reuse my wick. So if they're too long, I'll go ahead and cut them and then I'll add this on the bottom with a pair of pliers. So that's what I did today. I took some crazy glue. Um, sometimes I'll use these little stickers. I know it's going to be hard to see, but they work fine. They're little like gummy stickers. They seem to hold the heat and they're easy to work with. I like it sometimes better than the glue because the glue has to dry, but this is what they look like. Just a, oh goodness. Thank you. a little, a little sticker like that. And it's okay if it gets crumbled up, they seem to hold either way. Um, we have our clothespins that we stick on top after we have the wicks put into the jars and the clothespins hold them up. Sometimes people use wick holders or these metal plates. Uh, it's easier for me to use the clothespins, so I like that. Also, they're a lot cheaper. Um, the next thing we have is our pour and I already started uh, melting some candle wax in here. And I have our thermometer in here and everything that I purchased, I got off Amazon. Uh, it's really easy to access and I'm very busy. So it comes the next day, but I do when I can like to go to different farmers markets and see if I can grab some like beeswax. Uh, today we're using soy wax. So 10 cups fits very easily in this and it'll go up to about here, almost the top, but don't worry, it melts down and it fits into 12 of the four ounce jars very easily. Um, we have our thermometer. And then last, I like to use uh, a, fragrant, a fragrance oil, uh, specifically for candles or soaps, but sometimes I do venture out and I'll use different brands that are, are more for, um, essential oil, your diffuser, or um, say uh, peppermint oil, I like to use a lot. I mean, I, I have that for headaches, but I'll take it if I'm in the mood and I'll use it and I'll make like a candy cane uh, type of scent with that. So I like to play around. In this today, I actually mix these two. This is an example of the brands that I'll use off of. Um, this, these two are from Amazon. I needed to make a bridal shower party a batch of 40 candles. So we got experimental and we mixed the pomegranate from this brand and then cherry blossom. And it came out with a really nice cherry blossom scent. If you can see this. Um, okay. Uh, another one of my favorites, though, I like this brand a lot. It's Nature's Oil, and this is a big one of lavender chamomile. So that lasts me a while. 
Okay. Um, next slide, please. So I prepped the jars already, like I said. Um, I stuck the wicks together and I put the clothespins on ready to pour. The, this again holds the wicks up. Um, mainly I see during the pouring process to dry if you want the wick centered in the middle. This is the best way to do it, even if the wicks that you have are, are a little bit um, more uh, standing straight up. Uh, these specifically I'm having a problem with or not, so I like to do it regardless, but the ones that a little bit straighter, I still do it with. So Ali, I just wanted to say that um, when I put the, the ball jars, these are the ball jelly jars, um, they come very clean. So I never had to throw them in the dishwasher or wash them before. I mean, my candles, do you, did you find the same thing that yours are always really clean jars? Right, yeah. And I mean, they package them, this brand specifically, Ball, they package them pretty well. You don't have any dust in them. But when I do purchase a, you know, a single jar, if you want to get creative and, you know, pour a batch of different, um, I've, I've done coffee mugs, you know, stuff like that. But then I would wash it with soap and water. This way the wicks stick well on the bottom. You don't know if there's any dust in there. Um, I, I also reuse my jars a lot. A lot of my friends will bring them back to me and ask them to, um, yeah, she's going in our, our freezer, which I've noticed that either freezing the jars or <laughs> there's a lot of them in there. Um, freezing the jars, eventually I'll take them out when I'm in the mood, I'll take them all out and I'll get the wax out. But like this, I probably shouldn't have thrown in there. It's, the wax is going up to here, so it's pretty high. I, I, I'm better off with um, putting hot water in it, boiling water. But like something like this, it's going to be easy for me to take an, a butter knife and chip at it. But be careful; they can break uh, a little bit easier with uh, those pressure points, I guess. Um, it, it's happened to me, so maybe boiling water is the best way if you don't want to play around with that, but uh, it does take a couple times for a lot of wax in there. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna pour soon. Okay, next slide. Okay, so we added our candle thermometer earlier. Um, yeah, you can grab me that just because that's, this is empty, but we have a couple different brands of thermometers. Anything works, it's a candy or a, a candle uh, thermometer. I think this specific one was, was targeted towards candy making, but they work the same. And I kind of just stick it on here, fill my wax up so it actually um, goes over the bottom of the thermometer part. And then this way the wax doesn't burn as well. So if you wanna do like a half batch, just make sure that you're covering the bottom, thank you. Um, and like I said, 10 cups of soy wax will fit great in that pour. Uh, that's a, you know what, I don't know the size of it, but it's a, st a standard candle pour that you're going to find. I, it looks like two quarts. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so we heat our wax on medium to 180 degrees. I have used both our stove, but then again, I've used this type of burner, which- No. Who said no? Yes, I am. I was thinking about you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't know where that is coming from, but okay. So I will use a burner. My sister actually had a couple burners from college and when the kitchen's preoccupied, we will just do this in the other room. Um, they both work the same. I would just keep an eye on the burner if you're going to uh, work that way. But up to 180 degrees, you add your fragrant oil, your fragrance oil, um, one ounce, for 12 candles, you can either use. Uh, what are you making today, huh? um, So I already did it. Okay. 
So earlier, I like I said, I use these two. Uh, I mix them. I use this piper, pipette, to measure it. Uh, this one goes up to three milliliters. Um, so I kind of did the equation, but most of the time you can find your essential oils. They come in that one ounce and I just will pour the whole thing and make it easy for myself. Okay, so I would definitely keep an eye on the temperature it rises very quickly and you don't want to burn your essential oil. This could take 30 to 45 minutes each burner is different. When you say burn your essential oil, what you really mean is that you burn off the scent, right? Right. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Um, so it, it will smell completely different. We've done it before at our experiments. Um, definitely keep an eye on it. And then when you go to let it rest and cool down, uh, if you go to the next slide, please. So after you pour the oil, you, you wait for it to reach around 125 degrees. And um, this again, I, I would keep checking it during that time because it, it takes a while to drop, but I have missed the dropping point and I've ruined a batch of candles and it's been a lot of wax. So definitely keep an eye on your temperatures. Um, but once the burner, once the pour is off the burner, I mean, you're pretty much okay. Um, you can pour the wax at 125. Let's just see. Okay, so I'm gonna pour a couple right now. Okay, so I like to pour in these jars to where the line is. It makes it easy in case I need to add any extra. And if, if I'm doing big batches, this cooled a little bit too much. So it's looking cloudy. It was around uh, 120 degrees. That's okay, I'm gonna use this myself, but um, I would preferably like it a, a little bit clearer and um, then the candle at that point will burn a lot nicer. And um, you'll see that you won't have the sides. Like, one second. In this candle, something happened in the burning process where half the candle only burnt. So um, you'll get some funny things happening like that. Okay. Oh yeah, and uh, at the end of your pour, I just put that candle down. Um, I like to make sure that all of the wicks are centered. Right after I pour, this way I don't have to fix it in the future um, and mess around some more. But let's go to the next slide. Okay, candle cooling takes about an hour. I like to wait overnight, really. Um, I think that that's the safest. And then um, the, the, the wicks won't move around at all if you go to move them. Um, I also like to cover them at the end. This way, the dust from fans don't, does not get into it because I've had that happen over a couple hours before uh, during the summer. So I like to cover them with a, a dish towel or whatnot. Um, let's go to the next slide. At the end, after I wait till they're completely dry, um, again, ideally overnight, we like to use a, a wick trimmer. I mean, scissors work fine. This gets into a candle jar easily. And I trim it to be a fourth of an inch. I don't know if you could see, that's a good size. This way it doesn't buckle with um, the black ash after you light it for a while. Uh, I poured this one a while ago. I got a little colorful. I think I reused this from a candle somebody gave to me, but um, I thought it was pretty. 
And I made this one so we could add some flowers to it today. I'm gonna put a little bit of wax in the top just to get a, um, it's sticky. If you want to add flowers after a candle's completely done, you can do this, add a little bit of wax on the top just to get a, a coat top layer, or you could use a, a blow dryer. Um, there's also different candle tools out, out there that will make it just as hot as the blow dryer if you don't wanna ruin a blow dryer with the wax at all. Um, just be careful and keep it on a low setting. Today, the flowers I'm gonna use are these jasmine. Um, they're tea flowers, but I thought they were pretty and I'm a tea drinker, so multitasked uh, with this one. But I also have, I also have like these pretty dried flowers that I always go to in different colors. And I'll take them apart little by little and use tweezers. Those um, are pretty. Yeah, right. And like I'll take like each little piece off like that and place them. I actually have a candle that I did. Um, I can show you. Do you want to pour a little bit of? Wax in the top of there. Okay. We have some tweezers. Okay. Do you want to put these on? So, um, very easy. Once you get a little bit of wax on the top, or um, you have it. Uh, liquefied a little from your blow dryer or your heat tool. Just take some tweezers. And I like to pat them down a little so they stick in the wax. Uh, and I would definitely make sure that if you're going to do this during your candle drying, um, that the candle is pretty much all the way done um, up to around this level. You'll see that it's solidified most of the okay. way. Show yeah. The top. So she just did. Oh, I don't know. It didn't come out flat. I don't know if you could see well. It didn't come out flat, but I'll I'll show you just because our if you can see the uh, wax is a little more solidified than we wanted, mm -hmm. but it's okay. It's still pretty and it looks creative. I'll be right back. I'm just going to get another candle. So all these principles that Ali explained to you can also be applied to larger containers. Um, it's important to just remember your temperatures, um, which are listed in the uh, PowerPoint slides. And the reason I say that is because you really need to make sure your wax is at the right temperature so you're not burning off your scent, which I have done. And my uh, blonde scent was nobody could smell it. And another reason is because of the cooling. As you had just seen, we poured that wax to lay the petals on. It was just a little too cool, which is why it didn't flatten out. Ideally, the wax would be. Uh, flatten out when I pour it on top, and then the flower petals would just lay flat on top. And I did that here, but I use a bigger candle for this. Do you have uh, to stay a certain uh, uh, away from the wick? Do you have to keep them a certain amount of length away from the wick? I like to. I mean, at least a little finger. Uh, yeah. I'm. I haven't noticed, and I got a little risky. I I haven't noticed any of my candles. <laughs> lighting the flowers on fire. So the, the wax will melt and usually cover them. But I had um, some like crazy, I have them right here, one moment. What's also really pretty to do is if you have little seashells, to have one or two or three seashells to the top, that, that always looks really Yeah, cool. seashells. Yeah. Especially, you know, with summertime coming. Or a Mika powder, which is like a, a glitter that works nicely. 
Um, but these I've done before, <laughs> they look pretty. Uh, I mean, that's getting, that's getting bold. I don't know if I would go that far again. Um, I, I didn't see them catch on fire, but I would stick with the smaller petals and keep them a little bit further away. But yeah, like with the big candles, I mean, I was able to pour this. The soy wax gets a, a little funny with the big candles, the bigger jars. Um, this is this is like six ounces. So I mean, I was able to pour that. I don't know if you could see, this is without the, the flowers. There's like indentations where it went to dry. So I like to stick with the four ounces, but I mean, I could go back and fix this up, but I just haven't had a chance yet uh, with a blow dryer and it should look nice. I plan on giving this as a gift. But yeah, Mika powder works really nice. Uh, I do not have any right now. That That is like a glitter. It's not flammable. Uh, you'll see it used in as a, a makeup shimmer but it's a mineral powder. So it's made out of minerals and a mineral. And I mean, it looks beautiful. I've seen a, a lot of pictures of those. Um, but did anyone have any questions for us? I do. Yes, um, the really expensive candles, their wax seems to last forever. Is there a certain wax you might use that would make it last longer? That's a good question. So there are different waxes out there. I like to use soy wax, uh, um, Yankee Candle. They use a paraffin, like those bigger brands uh, that, I mean, they're beautiful and they last forever, like you said, but you'll notice the, the soot it puts out. Like, um, yeah, so that's why I stay clear of those. I mean, this, little four ounce candle will burn for about 10 hours. I mean, I don't like to burn it a, a full 10 hours at once, but like two rounds, five hours each. Um, I've seen it go for a while. I, uh, I, I haven't really burned. Oh, you know what? This one, this has, this is soy wax. And I made this I mean, it's burning a little funny. I, like I said, I don't like to do anything bigger than the, the four ounces myself. I just think that's easier for soy wax, but this one has lasted a while. Um, so I don't know. I, I mean, they're, they're different. I haven't seen one last longer than the other personally. I, th I think that they burn the same um, time-wise, but I just go for the, the soy wax because of, the, the set that, it, you know, the, the other one. Where do, you, where do you buy the soy wax from? Yeah, um, you could buy it at Michael's, a craft store. I personally buy it online, but any craft store will have it. Okay, hi, uh, I have a question. Uh, can I recycle wax? Because I collect with other white wax candles. Yes, and I do it as well. I um, I have a bunch of wax actually from this uh, gentleman. He he makes like tapers, so they're not in in jars, and it'll leave um, you know the bottom ring on the on the end that I will take and I'll throw into this pot, just as I did with the wax flakes. Um, you know, let me show you. I'll be right back. Thank you. You're welcome. Just like you put the flowers on the top, you can layer them as you go, right? If you wanted to. So that way, as it burns, you might see the flowers within or no? Yeah, I've done that as well. Um, at that point, I, I've tried to get them on the... Thank you. I've tried to get them to lay right on the edge because they'll float and they'll sink. I mean, it, it works. You just have to be with the, the candle as they're drying and, and kind of gauge where you want to place it. But yeah, you could do it as it's drying along the way here and there, or um, you could burn half. I mean, you could pour half of it and then pour the other half. I've done that 
Um, I think we did color or I showed you a color blocking in the last Zoom that we did. But right. yeah, um, I wouldn't personally just throw them all in there. They, they will sink. But if you don't mind and you want to play around, it, it, it still looks pretty to me. I did ferns, dried ferns with that. Oh, yeah. So um, this is what the wax will look like that I use. It's soy wax. It, they're like flakes almost. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, it'll, thank you. It'll just break down a little bit differently. And it's not going to smell as vibrant as it did in the beginning. But like I collected this. If you can see, it's the ring from the bottom of, um, I forget. It, it was a bigger candle. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take this black and I'm going to pour a little baby one, not as big as this. Um, okay. I don't have it around, but it'll, it'll fill enough to have maybe like a two ounce candle and it'll be really pretty. And, um, I mean, right now this smells still, I, I, it's going to smell a little bit. It's just not going to smell as it did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because I, I have a uh, leftover and mm -hmm. I would like to use. I don't want, yes, why, why, why waste, right? Right, I do it. And then even um, store-bought store -bought candles from, say, like, I don't know, Ikea, like that's those type of places that are a little bit cheaper made candles um, that I've noticed they won't burn all the way down, like Pier 1 candles. I don't know if anyone's ever had them, but... Uh, they they'll leave like this much on the bottom. So I'll burn them even with the wick still in it. And I know I can't get the wick out, but mm -hmm. as it burns and as it melts, the wick will be left at the bottom and I'll just grab it out with um, tweezers or something that's around. Right, great. Yeah. Great. Yes. Good. And also the paper, make sure sometimes they have, there's a warning sticker on the bottom. Peel okay. that out too. But grab the wick, the paper and the little, uh, you could get the metal piece off the wick. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I saw that. If you miss the temperature, the 125, um, say you get distracted or something and you miss that, do you have to start from scratch with that? Um, no, I I haven't. I'll be honest. I mean, I know it, it's, it, the integrity of the candle is not going to be as it could be, but I'll raise the temperature up, you know, the five degrees and call it a day. Okay. It happens really quickly, but it's, it's not that bad. Okay. 125. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I actually have a lot of seashells. Yeah. yeah. And so I was thinking of maybe lining the container with seashells. Uh, would that work? Yes. Yeah, definitely. We play around with seashells a lot. We like the sea. I wish I had one. I just gave it as a gift. Um, I just did it as we did with the, with the flowers. I just kind of put them in on top. Um, and I even, I used a blow dryer to do that. I I had the candle already poured and I just let the wax get a, a little liquidy and I put them in there, but it, it came out beautifully. I had smaller shells, but yeah, do the whole thing. Or even um, you want to put them on the bottom and have a couple like, you know, this much stacked that would, that would look pretty or like even this type of these little balls, these little marbles. You could put those in the bottom of your jar and then pour the candle over it. That's nice. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? This was fun, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so. So I'm going to share the slides with everybody. I'll email them out to everyone who signed up for the class. Okay. Um, that way you guys all have the list and everything. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, the last thing I wanted to tell you. Oh, let me just show you. This I, I purchased at a craft store, but it is a tin full of all these little baby dried flowers. So, um, I mean, you don't have to go crazy with purchasing them. Uh, 
I mean, this one, so like little guys like that. But uh, the last thing that I'll do with a lot of the candles, I found different color hemp and, I, and just the regular natural hemp and I'll wrap the top. I'm gonna do it right now. I wrap the top of it, especially for baby showers. I mean, um, any type of shower that that you want to make it look a little bit fancier. So sometimes I'll do like a double to make it a little thicker. But this, a lot of people tend to like. So I'll just tie it on the the side like that. But yeah, that's it. Um, go ahead, send everyone that email. And the supply list, did I have a more in-depth supply list from last time? I forget. I don't think so. I think this is the only one, but if you have anything else, you can email it to me and I'll pass it on. Okay, sounds good. Let me look for that. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>